What's up, guys? Before I jump into it, my friends over at G Fuel ended up bumping up code ESPRESSO to 30% off, not only in celebration for the holidays, but also in celebration of Season 1 for Black Ops Cold War and Warzone. If you guys want to restock or try something out for the very first time, be sure to use code ESPRESSO. If you're interested, links in the description below. Yesterday, we ended up getting an update for Black Ops Cold War, Warzone, and actually even Modern Warfare, in which that kicked off everything we'll see here for those games in relation to Season 1. Some stuff on the front end, as well as some stuff on the back end. And, well, it turns out, as you'd probably imagine, Imagine with an update that's bringing along with it almost as much content as what launched with Black Ops Cold War, there's a lot to discuss and a lot to talk about. So in this video, we're going to break down everything that changed, everything that you should know about, the new features, content, and functions that we see in Black Ops Cold War, Warzone, and even Modern Warfare. So this is a big one. Let me know your thoughts down below as we go along. Are you liking any of these changes made so far, any of the content additions? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts. I don't normally do this, but because it is such a massive update and such a massive video here with this, if you could do me a favor and drop a like if you enjoy any part of this, it helps out the video greatly. And as well, if you are new to the channel, perhaps a part of that, nearly 68% of viewers not subscribed, do be sure to hit the subscribe button as we're on that road to 400,000 subscribers, and we'll keep up to date with all things Black Ops Cold War, Warzone, and anything Season 1 related. So if you'd like to join the community, I'd love to have you. That said, let's talk about this update. So let's start it out with the introductions in terms of new content and new features that we ended up getting. For seasonal introductions, we got a lot of stuff naturally, but one big one is that of the new ranking system in which this is now a cross game progression system that's synchronized across Cold War, Warzone, and Modern Warfare, and is based upon your current level in Cold War. Everything you've unlocked up until this point, such as weaponry, perks, score streaks, and such, will all remain the same unlocked past that initial military rank you have. But your rank itself will be set down to level one based upon whatever prestige you hit in season zero. So in my case, I hit that level 100 max, which is technically the start of prestige three. So my rank will be third prestige level one at that point. But once I rank up a little bit and I get to rank 50, I'll move over into another prestige automatically, get that new prestige emblem, a prestige key, a weapon blueprint, and a battle pass tier skip. At rank 100, I'll enter into another prestige, get a new emblem with that. This time hitting prestige five, I'll get a prestige key and a battle pass tier skip. At 150, I'll hit sixth prestige, get that emblem, a prestige key, and a tier skip. And then at 200, I'll end up getting the seventh prestige emblem as a capped reward like this preseason gave us that third prestige emblem. But what's different than normal than what we saw here from launch is that when we get to that point, I'll get the prestige key and a tier skip, but I'll also end up getting the prestige master calling card, and I'll have access to all the seasonal challenges that are unlocked each 10 levels up until that point. At that point, I'll be branded as a prestige master, and then from there, if I decide to play more, I can go upwards of level 1000 while receiving a prestige key every 50 levels. So you sort of have a cap, but also don't at the same time. It's kind of strange in that regard. But again, this is across all three main titles. So if I play Warzone, I advance that rank. If I play Modern Warfare, I advance the same rank. It's not just dependent on how much you play Cold War. It's instead across all those three platforms. But along with that stuff, of course, we have the new prestige key system and the prestige shop, which you can then redeem those keys with items such as prestige icons and blueprints. So there's some cool things in there to check out and you'll be able to redeem that again with your playtime. So make sure you check it out when you have the opportunity to. Seasonal challenges are also introduced again here as mentioned. This bringing in 20 seasonal challenges, one unlocked every 10 levels, and each completion awarding a calling card. If all challenges are completed, you'll of course end up getting an additional seasonal mastery calling card, similar to the emblems that we had as that sort of 10th emblem last year in Modern Warfare, but you'll have these for both MP and Zombies. So in total, 40 or I guess 42 with those mastery calling cards available in the season. Next up in terms of seasonal content, we have of course one of the flagship items of season one, the battle pass. But we detailed this earlier in the day or as of late last night. That video is up on the channel if you want to check it out in its entirety, but it's available in a free and premium use. The weapons of the MAC-10 and the Groza coming at tier 15 and 31 respectively are free to use and do not require any purchase into the system to acquire them. But outside of that, there's a whole host of other cosmetics that you can end up getting if you decide to go into that system. That's entirely up to you, but that's what was introduced here at this. But again, these items included coming along for Cold War and Warzone, but being able to be progressed in all three titles of Cold War, Warzone, and Modern Warfare. So it doesn't matter what you play, you'll still be able to progress that as time progresses. Operator skins have also been introduced as well as a part of the Battle Pass and Season 1 content in which all Operator skins come with Operator missions in Season 1, with MP, Zombies, and Warzone play allowing you to have additional XP rewards and skin variants earned. 
So that was something that was continued from Modern Warfare and brought into Cold War. Outside of that, in terms of other content, the mainline content that we see here with this, of course, we have those new maps, the Pines Raid and Nuketown 84 Holiday. The Pines being an interesting one here with it, kind of large playing towards a couple of different play styles you can engage with and take part in. Kind of something for everybody, though there are different niche areas, I guess, for those specific play styles, but an interesting one, no less, like in the aesthetic of it, at least. As with all new maps, it takes a little bit of time to really get a hands-on feel of how everything will work out. So in that regard, I'm not entirely sure if I'll like this one, love it, dislike it, or hate it, but we'll see in time. As for Raid, it was beautiful to see the classic return here in this regard. I know that some people may not be too fond of re-releases of maps, but Raid's one of those ones that I think transcends call of duty maps and is one that unlike nuketown hasn't been beaten to death to where it's in every single game so it is nice to see this return i believe i'm excited to jump into this one here and relive some of the classic feel from black ops 2 and kind of black ops 3 but we don't really talk about that one nuketown 84 holiday though is a nuketown variation here at this that is holiday themed pretty self-explanatory not much really else to talk about here at this if you've played nuketown in cold war you've played this version it's just a reskin but then we'll end up seeing later on in the season regular nuketown 24 7 and nuketown 84 come back as well but for right now, those are the three we had introduced. As for modes, we saw the introduction here at launch with Gunfight and Prop Hunt and the game mode of Dropkick coming later on in the season. But for right now, Gunfight introduced us to four maps in a 2v2 format here with this, that being Game Show, ICBM, Ubon, and KGB. Partner up with your duo in the first six rounds ends up winning the match. As for Prop Hunt, this is one where one team are the hunters and one team are the hunted, or in that case, the props, where you have the opportunity to play around as different items items that could blend in with the environment. Hopefully, you do have a limited number of switches if you don't like your initial spawn item that you are, but your goal is to stay alive for as long as possible. According to the patch notes, this is available on The Pines, Cartel, Checkmate, Moscow, Nuketown 84 Holiday, and Garrison right now, and likely more maps being introduced as time progresses and that's introduced into the season a little further. The featured playlists talking about playlists here for this week are now Raid the Mall, which is a mosh pit of 6v6 modes on Raid and the Pines, two of the new maps here, then Gunfight, which is available, of course, for that 2v2 play, Prop Hunt, and Nuketown 84 Holiday 24-7 as those featured right on the main menu. Now that's the big MP stuff, but for me, the biggest part here out of this is so much Warzone content or so much Warzone integration. Firstly, we have Rebirth Island, a secondary map here to Verdansk. It does not replace Verdansk, but instead offers a smaller level of play here that you can take in a BR experience. If you remember Alcatraz from Blackout, Think of how that played and then put it into the Warzone experience. Mechanics are a little bit different. You don't have some of the stuff you did here. Some of the gunplay is going to be different than Blackout, but it's going to be an overall same vibe here at this, where you have a less player count, but you drop in with right now multiple respawns and later on after the current mode is taken out with a single respawn, but it's just a lot more close quarters action and a lot more CQB engagements in terms of the buildings you have on offer, the way the zone will work, the way everything flows. It's just a different experience. And that's something that I can definitely get behind. I had a ton of fun with Alcatraz and Blackout. Incredibly excited to get my hands on and just grind out Rebirth Island now with this. Plus, there's an Easter egg we're going to be hunting, which I'm really excited here for. I love that kind of stuff. I know it might not be everybody's cup of tea, but I love Easter egg stuff like that. So I'm just excited to see what this has on offer here with this. Of course, for regular Verdansk and regular Battle Royale, there's going to be weapon integration in droves. Every single weapon that you have within Black Ops Cold War is now in Warzone. So you have the opportunity to take that stuff over into your loadout, see how that all works out, what will be the best weapons. That's the big question right now because the meta is definitely going to be shaken up when you add 30 plus new weapons into a game that had comparable numbers here at this. Of course, I think we're probably up in the 50s, maybe 60s now for Warzone weapons with all the DLC. I truly can't remember off the top of my head. That may just be way off, but it is a large percentage of the already existing number of weapons in Verdansk being now reintroduced with Black Ops Cold War. So there is a lot to talk about here in the coming days as we figure out the best meta weapons and things like that, but a lot of stuff to experience. And if you're a Warzone fan, it's a great time to jump in. 
Now, outside of that, for other Warzone specific stuff, of course, we have those two new Gulags, one for Verdanskin. Once Rebirth Island Resurgence is taken away, it is something that you'll have the new Gulag within Rebirth Island, but for right now, every 30 seconds until the final zone, you end up having the option to redeploy if you have a squad member that is still standing. But these new Gulags offering up a little bit more in terms of different ways to play the Gulag, a new map inside that Gulag, new visual experiences and things like that, but some cool stuff, no less. There's also now the Rebirth Island seasonal event in which it brings along with it 16 new challenges for those dropping into Rebirth Island for the first time that can earn calling cards, charms, emblems, stickers, and a special noxious LMG blueprint along with more secrets to uncover as it's detailed. So a lot of cool stuff here with that in relation to Warzone and Honestly, I'm very excited to jump into this stuff. Outside of that, on the front-facing side of things, closing us out here, we actually have a shop now within Black Ops Cold War and subsequently then carrying over into Warzone as well, which first things first, actually a cool little announcement here that I have is that my creator code for Modern Warfare now extends over into Black Ops Cold War. So if you find anything interesting here within this shop in Black Ops Cold War and you want to support the channel a little further, you can use code ESPRESSO in all caps in the in-game shop and it will support the channel a little further. If you end up doing this, do be sure to tweet me a picture of you using this code here, having it active in your game. I'd love to shout out some of your generous support. But said, in terms of what was introduced in the shop here, the inaugural update here for this brought along with it quite a bit. Honestly, there's quite a few of these bundles that I enjoy. As for the usefulness that I'll get out of them, that would probably only be used in Warzone. Now that we have this integration, it's kind of crazy right now. The balancing's all over the place, but hopefully that gets ironed out in the near future here. But there's a handful of items that I think I'll definitely pick up. The Gilded Age is pretty solid. There's an AK-74U variant that I ended up picking up at one point as well. So a lot of cool stuff here. If you are interested in some more cosmetics, some customization, there's now going to be quite a bit here added in as time progresses. And even right now, immediately, there's a lot up on deck. But let's jump over to some technical things here with this. Let's talk about some weapon tuning. Of course, we had that MAC-10 SMG introduced into the game. We had the Groza introduced into the game, both of those coming at tier 15 and tier 31 respectively. But in terms of weapon changes, the Assault Rifles had a couple of weapons adjusted. The AK-47 saw a reduction in its headshot multiplier and reduced the damage for the 20-inch Spetnaz RPK barrel. The Krig-6 had a reduction in its headshot multiplier, and the FFAR had an increase to the damage ranges and reduction in its recoil, making it somewhat more usable than it was pre-patch, of course, but not quite as dominant as where it was at launch. For submachine guns, we saw adjustments to the Milano, the KSP, and the Bullfrog, all of which had increases to their effective damage ranges, buffs all around here for those ones. The tactical rifles of the M16 and the AUG had adjustments in which the M16 saw a reduction to the maximum effective damage range and also had a reduction in its fire rate. The AUG had a reduction in its headshot multiplier, plus reduced that maximum effective range while also reducing the fire rate and damage for the 19.8 inch Task Force barrel. As for adjustments overall in the TAC rifles category, it adjusted adjusted barrel attachments that improve fire rates for the tactical rifles. The M60 in the LMG category saw an increase to the ADS speed and an increase to the weapon swap speeds. The sniper rifles or the Barrett saw an increase to the damage of the multiplier for the chest to allow for one hit kills without attachments. On that, we also saw the 22.6 inch Tiger Team barrel will now increase the one hit kill zone to the upper arms and we saw a recoil adjustment for higher shot power. The Magnum saw an adjustment where it increased the effective damage ranges and increased the fire rate. The Hauer 77 ended up having a decrease in the range for its damage and a decrease on the damage range for the 25.2 inch task force barrel. The Gallo also saw a reduction in its damage range as well as a decrease in the fire rates and the damage range for the 24.8 inch tack force barrel. As for attachments for shotguns, it adjusted all barrel attachments that improve fire rates for the shotguns and in general reduced the amount of player knockback there was when receiving damage by bullet weapons across all weapon categories. As for perks, we saw some adjustments here with this in which Flak Jacket reduces now the explosive damage mitigation, nerfing that slightly and making rockets and other explosives a little bit more viable. Forward Intel saw an increase to the viewable minimap area, making that a little better as well. Ninja saw a reduction in the protection for the field mic, so that's a big change here with this one. And Spycraft added full immunity for the field mic detection, allowing Spycraft to be something of a little bit more of a viable perk, whereas previously Ninja and Ghost were likely the only 
only things you've really cared about in that final perk category. So definitely a little bit more of a choice now here whenever you go and craft your build. As for equipment, the frag grenade saw a slight increase to the damage. The Molotov also saw a slight increase to the damage and the stim shot reduced the heal speed. So you will not go from whatever health you were all the way up to full health as fast. For field mics, as well as those adjustments that countered in the perk category, we saw that these no longer detect users who are crouch walking, ADS walking, or swimming, and the gas mine saw an increase to the damage, a removed detonation delay, and also reduction in how a player can be slowed when the gas is affecting them. As for score streaks, we of course saw the introduction of, and it's already been live, of the Harp, the high altitude reconnaissance plane. It shows both enemy positions and their directions on the minimap in real time, which is definitely nice. I've heard discrepancies that Ghost does and does not counter this, but it is something that cannot be taken down by things like your air patrol, but can be shot down with, I believe, five rockets that have locked onto it. The cruise missile also had an addressed issue where there was a cruise missile HUD effect that would display after the kill cam and addressed an issue where the players using it from a care package could clear score earned towards the player's equipped missile score streak. The RCSD also had an issue addressed that would allow it to push teammates. And the final thing to talk about in terms of some tuning, we saw some adjustments in things like, say, hardpoint spawns on maps of Crossroad Strike, Moscow, and Nuketown 84. There were addressed issues for zone borders in Domination. Players will now join matches in progress less free frequently in free-for-all. The bomb waypoint will now fade when in a line of sight for search and destroy. Control overtime parameters have been adjusted where the overtime defense is now given to teams with the fewer total deaths during the previous four rounds. VIP escort had some issues with the modeling addressed and fixed out. Fire team had a few issues with the cruise missile HUD effects, the overhead spawn effects for fire team as well, and a few crashes that would occur related to the sentry turret. Outside of that, there is a whole host of other changes in the relation to zombies in which it added two-player support for split screen added various stability fixes so hopefully that stops players games from crashing as much as it did it added stability improvements for host migration it added support for the mac 10 and the groza it added support and the new score streak of the cruise missile to be used there's now leaderboards to track highest rounds completed instead of total rounds completed salvage has been adjusted so the distribution of high grade salvage and regular salvage is a little bit more in line with where players would probably consider it to be fair there are issues that were addressed in the exfil sequence the one that always killed me when playing solo is that zombies wouldn't make it to the exfil location in time and so therefore you just lost because you couldn't find the zombies they just didn't show up it addressed issues with pack-a-punch the ui various things and equipment and of course dead ops arcade as well onslaught for playstation 4 and playstation 5 saw a little bit of an increase to the early surge spawn rates for faster paced experiences those first initial rounds are incredibly slow they also added in the functionality to play on the pines and nuketown 84 with various exploits fixed on nuketown because that was already existing and also then address some issues with enemies and the general performance so overall there was a ton of stuff here within black ops cold war and warzone added in but again that's not everything because on the end of modern warfare we did see a little bit in terms of new adjustments and some changes here for this in which of course the playlist update for modern warfare for those still checking it out it's boots on the ground war blueprint gunfight face off dom s and d double down and realism gunfight and we saw some fixes here made in which the fennec had an increase to the damage range the iso also had an increase to the damage range and then some general fixes where a bug on hackney yard was fixed a bug where players couldn't obtain the nuke after getting the correct number of kills to get it that's been fixed out there is a wilson pathing bug that was fixed out and also a revive prompt in cyber attack appearing inconsistently that's been fixed out as well so that is everything that we had here across all three main titles and holy crap it is a lot to talk about so season one big update here a lot to jump into and that's where we're gonna wrap it up so i would love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below if you made it this far comment something crazy let's just go with gulag tourist if you made it this far comment that down below but thank you guys so much for sticking around here hopefully this proved to be insightful if you enjoyed the video drop a like down below of course if you are new to the channel do be sure to hit the subscribe button we're on that road to 400,000 subscribers and we'll keep you up to date with absolutely anything you need to know in relation to anything cod and with season one here we have so much to talk about so you won't want to miss it if you also want to follow me over on twitter and instagram those are the best places to get connected to us on our youtube practically live on both those so if you guys want to check out my conversation ask me a question whatever it may be that link is down there in the description below but said thanks so much for watching Madison Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.